And in some ways, I like looking at Lou Pearlman and sort of looking at the past. And this leads into our next article, which I think leads us into the present and quite possibly the future as well. Frank Ocean's release of Blonde marks the start of a major fight in the music industry. The independently released Blonde may be the beginning of the end for exclusive album deals. It's only a matter of time. The release of Blonde marked much more than Frank Ocean's musical return after four years away. Hardcore music fans might not know, Frank Ocean's debut record, Channel Orange, was hugely influential. It topped all the best ofs four years ago, and then nothing. And then he'd slowly been teasing that he was going to have new music. But it was quite the switcheroo. The release of Blonde marked much more than Frank Ocean's musical return after four years away. After satisfying his Def Jam deal with the release of Endless... Frank Ocean released Blonde independently in a move that marks the first shot in an inevitable fight between music labels and streaming services. So basically what happened was, this article from The Verge doesn't contain this piece. I may have it in other tweets that I sent out. Frank Ocean still owed Universal one more album. So much like now Hollywood movies are trying to ape music releases, the sort of surprise release... So Frank Ocean teased, hey, you guys, I'm going to have a new record. And he dropped it in the middle of the night. It was an album-length thing. And everybody was pretty cool. Oh, wow, he released this thing. The very next day, after completing his Universal deal with Endless, which he dropped in the middle of the night, he busts out with sort of his real new return album called Blonde. And this one was independent. The relationship between an artist and a music label has been a notoriously fraught one, but until recently, there was nowhere an artist could run to when they tired of their label besides the next label down the street. Now, in a race to get more subscribers for their streaming services, the biggest company in the world and one run by an artist have positioned themselves as a friendly alternative for musicians. Meanwhile, the labels, in a bid to avoid a future they may not be able to survive, may ultimately end up on the side of some fans who want music available through every viable medium. This is the nightmare scenario for music labels. For years, labels have feared that as streaming services grew in power and scope, there could come a time when some artists could choose to forego working with labels and engage directly with a streaming service to reach their fans. Up until now, this hasn't been the case with an artist of consequence for a few reasons. Younger artists need the structure and nurturing that a music label can provide, and established superstars have usually built up a rapport and are loyal to the group of people, most of whom work for the label, that have helped them become stars and simply choose to stay after getting a big payday. What did we just hear in the story about the death of Lou Pearlman? Even the people he ripped off are like, eh, he still discovered me though. Beyonce is a great example of this. She doesn't actually need to stay with Columbia Records, but her and her team have been on an exemplary exemplary run over the last decade, and there's little reason to switch it up. Lemonade may have been released exclusively through Tidal, but you'll still find Columbia Records in the credits. But what Frank Ocean has done is different. This isn't going independent while still using a major for distro, like Jay-Z's done. This is a complete avoidance of the traditional musical hierarchy. Ocean has a young, rabid fan base that primarily interacts with him online. He doesn't need to distribute physical copies of albums to thousands of stores like Adele or Taylor Swift. He's part of a small club of superstars who don't need the label system and who have the leverage to do deals with streaming services instead of re-signing their contracts, and that's scary for music labels. According to a newsletter from Music Insider and critic Bob Lefsetz, Universal Music Group, UMG, Ocean's former label, has banned exclusives on the heels of the release of Blonde. If true, the ramifications of that change could be huge on the label stable of artists, most notably with Drake, who has an exclusive deal with Apple Music, having released his last three projects through the service. Why the dramatic move from UMG? A-list artists bring in a large chunk of revenue for the labels and allow them to lock up younger artists who probably won't move records on their first release with advances that they otherwise couldn't afford. If those superstar artists leave the label system altogether for streaming services, it could throw a wrench into the already delicate financials of the music industry and cause a power shift that the industry hasn't experienced since iTunes hit the scene in 2003. 
I believe there was a little Napster thing right before that. But for streaming services, nothing changes. There's no different for them doing a standard exclusive when the label is involved, although it's probably easier to negotiate with a single artist compared to an entire company. The modern exclusive deal for an album release has allowed the artist to get paid up front from the streaming service, money from Apple, an ownership cut from Tidal, while the label gets no direct financial benefit from the deal. So is this going to be the end of exclusives? Probably not. That relationship has worked until now. Sales for exclusive albums have done well for everyone due to the extra promotion and general hype surrounding the project. Just three months ago, labels were singing the praises of exclusives on the heels of Drake selling a million copies of views in a week on a single platform while setting a worldwide streaming record. But it seems like the pendulum, pendulum rather has swung. Is this the end of exclusives? Probably not, though it's the biggest in the industry. UMG is the only label group to reportedly have banned exclusives so far, and there's no guarantee Sony or Warner will do the same. But this is the beginning of a fight that may determine the future power structure of the music industry. Telling an artist they can't release an album exclusively through Apple or Tidal when they're offering them millions won't easily be forgotten. Especially when the artists look at the numbers and realize an exclusive blockade isn't in their best interest. Frank Ocean's only one artist, but it only takes one to inspire others. Does Drake need to sign another deal with Cash Money? Who ironically just signed an exclusive deal with Apple for a documentary, or could he just release all the content through Apple? Chance the Rapper, who is seemingly a superstar in the making, has already said he won't sign to a label and released his last project exclusively through Apple. When labels have become synonymous with drawn-out court cases and absurd contracts, does anyone need labels other than labels? These are the questions that keep label executives up at night. The battle for the future of the music industry has begun, and it won't be pretty. And guess who wins? We do! That's right. All the big boys are going to tear each other apart. Now, it's kind of interesting in one way they say, well, well, you don't have to sign to a label now. You can just go to Apple. You can just go to some other giant monolithic multinational corporation. I know, they're talking about it just for the distro. They don't own anything. Apple doesn't own your record. It's just all about the distro, as it has always been all about the distro. 